We got Coach Sullivan here. Go ahead. So uh, what led to the decision to dismiss Coach Yates? Um, I, you know, it's uh, my job is to give our team the best chance to, to win weekly. And, um, you know, it's just it, um, our conversation yesterday was one about, you know, 133 points in three weeks. So, um, you know, we, I owe it to our, our players and our fans to give them the best chance. And, and so we moved on. Difficult was it for you on a personal basis? To it's always difficult. It's always difficult when you, you um, when you have to have that conversation with another man, and as many times as uh, as much time as you spend together, particularly in this business, which is not an eight to five job, um, it's a lot of hours, it's a lot of thought, it's a lot of talking, it's a lot of things, and you know, um, you combine that with the fact that uh, you know when I became a head coach that that. That uh, at A and M we hired him as I hired him as a, as a secondary coach, and we sat and talked about career paths. Um, and when he went back to his alma mater as a uh, as a defense coordinator, I supported that. So it's not like uh, it's somebody I didn't know, and it's 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 that these kinds of things are hard. But um, that being said, you know. Um, it's, it's 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 business for for big boys, grown men, and it's it's hard. And my job is to um, evaluate, um, continue to analyze, and try to give our our players uh, the best chance to to win. What did you see over these last three weeks that you just did not like? What was the I just said it. 133 points in three weeks. That's what this this job plays. I mean. Everybody. It pays off on results. Did, did anything have to do with him being here for four years or him being no. longer than you? No. That's you guys' thought process. I've known him longer than four years. So. Why make the change at this point in the season? Because I, I think that, um, you know, I, I, as I evaluate where we are, our, our players have not quit. Our players are playing hard. And I owe it to him to try to get the, the best situation I can, I can give our players this week. And then does that mean wait till the end of the year? Does that mean it's a lot of things? It's like young guys playing, everything that's going on. Um, our fans, uh, we, we, we want to win every game. And um, so those are tough decisions. But you know what? That's 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 – what I'm hearing, that's what the, the, I think. That's what our players expect, um, and you know I, I can't speak for the fans or anybody else, but I know that's what our players expect because we expect the same out of them. What do you want to see from this defense That's a pretty general question. What do you want Chuck to come in and do? What, what's the first thing you, you're asking Chuck to do to try to improve? What we well, see? we've we've had those conversations, and. Um, you know, it's just uh, we, we talk about consistency. We talk about a lot of different things. Um, you know, schematically, he's been in that room. He understands, I think, more than anything else. Um, he understands um, the verbiage. And so you don't have to have a full-scale change of uh, the communication piece, which I think it becomes big. And um, as I told Chuck yesterday, I said I've, I've been through, I've been through this. And when Coach Slocum called me and said, "Be ready to run the offense tomorrow," so when you have a situation where, uh, where you have the verbiage, maybe you're going to do things differently. Um, you have a different mindset, but the verbiage is there. The the ability for the the, the players on that side. Um, to understand where you're headed with, with that verbiage and not making wholesale changes and communication and everything else, I think it happens quicker. And so, um, as I said, I've been through this um, on both sides. And, um, you know, it's, it's Chuck going, I think right now, you know, what we need is some, uh, just a, a different direction and, and a spark. And that's, I think that's what he and Hank bring. 
When, when did you uh, have that opportunity to take over the play calling? What year was that or what school was that? Was and and, and what was your job before? I was the, um, I was a wide receiver coach and the assistant head coach. And so he presents that opportunity to you and then how did you react to it or how did you handle it? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's a little bit different, but guess what? Everybody wants either you want that that piece or you don't. And um, you know, and, and out of respect for other people on the staff and, and everything else, I've 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 seen it mid season, been through it mid season. So you know, um, my conversations yesterday with Chuck were a little bit about how that how that was going to work, what the room's going to look like, and you know how you talk to. I mean, in the conversation with the other defensive coaches that were retained. Have you made any changes like this as a head coach at your previous stops? No. During the middle of the season? No. How is that different than just waiting to the end of the season? I mean, is it just a matter of uh, use this as an audition for these last few games? for the, uh, the I, it, it, Listen, as a coach, you're always in an audition. So I don't understand you know, what that question's about. Because uh, you're, you're uh, as a coach, you're, it's, it's an audition every week. How much input do your analysts have week to week? Depends. Depends. You know, Chuck was a senior analyst. He's been around. He's, um, you know, here's a guy who has been a defensive coordinator at the highest level, um, been an assistant coach, played for years. Uh, so he, he's got some knowledge. Um, that uh, that uh, in, in in certain situations. So you know, we'll see. Uh, you know, I think uh, just for us, and I'll go back to this. Just for us right now, I think that you know he and Hank um, give us an opportunity to go in a different direction. Probably not dramatically, um, dramatically or schematically. Um, just not a wholesale change, but just from an energy and a and a, and, uh, a spark level, it, because he's been in the room. Both he and Hank been in the room. They they know what they're talking about. They know where we are. They've seen the issues, uh, and and you know, we, what we want to do is give our players and our fans a, a, a chance to to win this season and, and you know, get to postseason play, and that's where the decision was made, and that's what it was about. Would it, would it be accurate to, to term him as an interim defensive coordinator? I think, yeah, everybody's <laughs> – let's be honest. When you're a coach, everybody's interim, right? So let's not uh, – I mean, that's that's the way it is. So um, – but, you know, as we talked yesterday, the approach is about <coughs> week to week in this season and what we can do. And, and as I said, I've been in that chair. And, you know, what can you do um, not – the next four or five weeks with a bye week, what can you do this week and then reassess where we are next week and during the bye week and then move on. Um, so it's a, it's an opportunity for him. It's an opportunity for Hank. It's an opportunity for our team. And, and, um, you know, that's, um, that's, that's why you make decisions like that. Sunday is normally a day off for the players. How were they, uh, was this translated to them? Was it just, yeah, we were meeting today. This will be the first time to sit down and As talk a group. about it. Yep. Uh, but there were several players I talked to yesterday. How did they take it? There were several players I talked to yesterday. I don't think that's you – know, what goes on in your house? Do you want me to ask you how did you, did you talk to your family? No. So they're ready to roll. Does Chuck, does Chuck get an opportunity to address the team – the defense, I guess. Today. 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 And, and, you know, so Sundays are off. Uh, team meetings at 3.30 and, um, with me. And then um, we'll go special teams, and then we'll go offensive and defensive meetings at 4-something. We'll practice tonight. So um, these guys all know what's going on. It's not like, um, you know, a couple of the, the players that I talked to yesterday, um, you know, they're, it's, those are, you don't air everything that, that happens in your house with your family, right? Because everybody doesn't need to know that. 
but they're ready to roll, and, and um, today will be big. Were you acquainted with Chuck before you came here? Were you familiar with his career? Uh, as a player, yes. And then, you know, obviously you pay attention um, in, as, as an assistant coach and even as a head coach because, you know, Jeff Fisher is was, um, a, a guy that, you know, I, I watched and, and as a player and as a coach. So, um, but on a personal level, you know, I, I wasn't, uh, on, a, on a personal level, you know, friends with Chuck. Um, I was probably closer friends with, with, not probably, I came out here and, and visited Mike because uh, I worked with Mike and Rich. So um, him being here was just a, you know, a, a thing where you just kind of bumped into each other. So, no, I, I, I wasn't really familiar or, or in a close personal relationship with Chuck probably until, not until I got here. Early signing period down. Is that something you take into account with making the move a little earlier? I don't. I mean, I'm. You know what? I'm heavily involved in recruiting. So um, we got a bye week next week. We've just finished that schedule. Where I'm going to be and what I'm going to do. Listen, this this is about this is about us being better and 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 winning games now. And um, you know all the things that you're talking about. I mean. Um, how they take it, what's going on here. It, it's it, Listen, it's about giving us the best chance to win now and and, um, and eliminating some of the things that, that have, you know, didn't work. And so my job, as I said, is to give our current players the best chance and the best opportunity to win. And that's how that decision was made, and that's that's where we're headed right now. So the recruiting piece is not going to change for me just because I'm extremely involved in it. I, I'm going to make the phone calls, the text messages, the DMs, all this stuff, and, in, um, and be at these games. And so, you know, it, it, the reality is this. Um, when you have a, a staff, if you've got really, really good coaches, they leave. If you, if you have other situations that, that – they kind of take care of themselves. So the constant should be the head coach. And that relationship with the head coach becomes the most important. What do you, uh, what do you see from Hay, Austin? I think he, here's a guy who was, you know, he's loyal. He's been here. He's a good player here. He's seen a lot of different things. He just, he's, a, he's a guy who I think, um, you know, is, is a little bit different. And, and sometimes you see yourself in people, um, but a, a younger guy that that uh, has energy that, that that can communicate with the players has done a good job of doing that, um, and has a voice in you know in in the room, and uh, so you know he, he's I, I, he's <laughs> probably as as excited as anybody to wake up on on Sunday morning and become a full-time Division One football coach that quickly is, is a big deal. So, um, you know, he's, uh, he's been there, done it here, cares about this university a, a, a great deal, and, I mean, he's going to work his tail off. That's the exact words, to, to be successful and help us be successful. I know you quoted the 133-point figure, but we did talk about last week how – you had to kind of look at it in context with the defense, with the offense and special teams struggling. Given all that, how surprised were you that the defense struggled as much as it did in the first half? I think my reaction lets you know. Um, changing to a different topic, you had said after the game that you probably were going to continue with the quarterback platoon system. What did, what did you like about how? I, I thought, uh, you know, we, we went into the game saying that uh, Grant's going to play the third series no matter what. Um, they both knew that. And I think, um, you know, whether we w – we'll have those conversations. We, this is not a Monday conversation. Um, you know, uh, it's a practice and, hey, here's what we're doing well. Here's what we think we can do. Um, and I thought, you know, for the first half it, it, was, it was good. You know, you, 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 we – we scored on the opening drive with Khalil with a field goal. Um, came back, 
Grant went down the field and scored um, for a couple series, and then you know we put Khalil back in there, and he runs for sixty some yards for a touchdown. So it was a, a change up, and a lot of things that kept us in the game. Um, so you know that's something we're going to continue to investigate. But obviously, you know both of those guys are are, are capable of of being successful, and. Um, you know how we how we manage that is you know everybody's going to second guess the, the situation. Well, if you're playing two quarterbacks, what's the situation? But there's a lot of people who do it, and at every level. And I think the the uh, important thing is, uh, although we did not win the game, I thought that both of them, um, because of the change of pace and because of the, you know, you can take pressure off of a guy. Uh, I thought both of them were effective, extremely effective, particularly in the first half. Um, and I think, you know, you get to the end, you, you put a freshman quarterback in there with three minutes to go, right? We had that discussion on, on the sideline. And three minutes to go to, to try to score, and we're down two scores. And that's a lot of pressure on him, too. So um, we feel comfortable with both those guys. We'll, we'll work through the week. And I think more than anything else, not that we, but that our team feels comfortable with both of them because I think they've seen them both operate in, in, um, in pressure situations and in, in on the road or uh, in, in, in different areas. So that's, that's going to continue, and, and I kind of like it. I kind of like the competition. I think it, it's a, and they're two different guys, right? And I think it, the first half, the, they showed that they were two different people in, in how they approached. One took off and ran for 60-some yards. The other guy was five for five on a drive on the RPO system. So um, that meant that I think that also creates some issues for people to prepare. Do you wish that you used the two-quarterback system sooner in the season? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that I would wish anything. I think right now we're eight games in, and Grant's a lot different player. Um, We've had two bye weeks. We've had a month of practice before. So Grant's a lot different player week 13 than he was week one. That's just being honest. Uh, his touchdown pass to Jalen Johnson. Yes. Um, obviously it was a freshman to freshman. Play. Yeah, great play by Grant. But Jalen, um, like someone who just got banged up a little bit in, in training camp. The, the, uh, what have you seen out of Well, the two, the two guys, right? So. Um, Booby and, and Jalen. Um, Booby had a, a shoulder injury in the in the in fall camp, and Jalen uh, tore a tendon, tore, tore the tendon in his thumb, which that is a that could have been catastrophic for a receiver, right? So both those guys missed at least four weeks, maybe five weeks. They missed uh, during camp and missed the first three weeks, two or three weeks of the of the season. Um, and I think you've seen that hurt us because we're counting on both those guys. They're big, they're fast, they're physical, uh, but they're young and they're learning. And so, um, you know, we would love to have them week one. Again, just to, to your, your question, right? So, you know, they're, they're freshmen. And these guys were out for five weeks and really didn't start playing a week three, four, five. Um, and I think you see both them. Uh, Jalen has has got good size and really good speed, and and Booby, who's got good size and, and strong. I think you you will see them continue to get better. And there's no doubt that missing that four or five weeks early in the year, where you lay the foundation of hey learning route running, because um, you know, they've always been big and fast. Right, but you've got you're going to play some other bigger and faster guys. Understanding schemes, understanding uh, uh, you know route changes against different coverages that hurt them. And I think what you see right now is the fact that they've been able to practice and play in these games for the last three weeks. They're getting better every week, and um, that's why we brought them here because I think they're both they they you know those those young guys have a real chance if you you know when you you start talking about that that whole crew offensively of young guys of of Wiley and Jalen Johnson and Booby and you know on and on you got to add Bam in there now because he's a redshirt freshman uh, Grant 
just a number of guys. And, and Tay, you know, just got here as a – I mean, really got here <laughs> the day before uh, fall camp started. You know, you've got a group of new guys that um, – that are still learning the game, but are getting better every week. And, um, you know, are going to be here for a while. You had two guys in that game Saturday, one on each side, and made fabulous one-handed catches. As, as a coach, you... Yeah, that, there's another one. There's another freshman, right? Yeah. As a coach, you came from an era where I'm sure coaches of your time, when you were learning the game, drilled two-handed, two hands to catch the ball. How much... Have you had to evolve into a system where maybe it's it's time to even practice that now to, to, to instruct guys that there's times when you may have to use one hand to make a play? Well, it's not. I mean, defense has changed too, right? So it used to be 20 years ago the, there was no arm bar to hold a guy, and now you got guys that are holding other people's hands inside, which we've seen in this league quite a bit. I'm not going to go down that road. But... Um, so it's however you can get to the ball, right? And um, obviously um, there's uh, a lot of these young guys watch OBJ, you know, do a lot of different things pregame, do a lot of different things, you know, in, 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 in practice, and that, that becomes popular. It's just like, like anything else, like basketball. It's like, you know, whoever that guy is and, and you know, when you start watching a bunch of these guys in one hand catches, and um, particularly from him, and you see on Sunday or Monday night, that's all he's doing before the game. You know, these guys watch that, and they they got they're they're on Instagram, they're on Twitter, they're on Snapchat. They see it, and they work at it. So I don't, you know, it's it's what it is, but. Um, you know, obviously that was a, I think what was more impressive than the catch was the ability to put both feet in bounds afterwards, which nobody even looked at <laughs> because everybody's watching the catch. But for him to do that, right, and he's a young guy. You know, are we going to say, hey, you catch it with one hand all the time? Hell no, we're not going to do that. But um, I think, you know, you're looking at, you know, when you, you, you talk about those three Freshman receivers and and put Tay in that group as a as a real speedster. I mean that's 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 a pretty good group that's uh, has got a huge future ahead of. Them. One more question for Coach: Is uh, Oregon State a better team than people think? Uh, based on, I mean, based on who they who they've who they've played and who they've 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 lost the same people we have and, and they've beaten the same people we have, right? Basically. Um, and so, um, you know, when it's like anything else, you know, you, you, uh, you know, it, it, you get used to saying certain things about different programs. Guess what? Um, they've, they've been in, they've been in a lot of games and they've beaten some people that everybody kind of turned around and looked at like, whoa, um, Jonathan's a, a really, really good coach. And, you know, I think. I think the world of him. I think, you know, he came through a time and he played with some guys. And if you look at their program right now, you know, you look at that roster, kind of like us, doing it a little bit different. But they've got some transfer guys in there, a little bit like it was for him playing quarterback there, right, with, with some guys that came rolling in there and they won a bunch of games. So he understands the, the, he understands the, the university. He understands what it takes to win. Um, and I think he's he's done a nice job of uh, blending in, in in recruiting, but also with the transfer market of getting guys there that can can play. And um, you know they 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 played in some really tough ball games and won, and, and some they've lost closely. But yeah, they're I mean this whole league. You know, you, you watch the scores, and I'm I'm a little bit like you guys. You you watch the scores, you kind of look up at the scoreboard. Sometimes you're like, what? They did who, what? So, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter who we're playing, right? We, we've got to play our best football on Saturday to have a chance to win. And, and really, that's what yesterday's decision was about. Thanks, everyone. All right, thank you.